Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Bramakian Podcast, a show where I can review anything, but not everything. That includes giant monster movies, anime, and video games. This week, a giant turtle makes his debut in the shadow of Godzilla himself, but later grew into his own thing. This week is Gamera, the invincible giant monster. Well, this is a very strange movie, isn't it? And it gets even stranger when you learn how this behemoth, behemoth excuse me, of a turtle came about. Godzilla has been achieving the successes of his movies for the past decade. Well, most of them. Of course, he is not alone. Rodan and Mothra have enjoyed the same success as well. With the addition of the movie The Birds, an American horror film directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, remember that one. Remember when I said that every studio under the fucking sun wanted to make their own giant monster movie? Well, that is certainly the case for one man. Masaichi Nagata, I hope I said that right, the then president of Daiei Film Studios, see I told you we are going to get to them, wanted something similar to Alvin Hitchcock's The Birds. The movie that he started developing was called Giant Horde Beast Nezera. It was going to be a movie about overgrown rats destroying Tokyo. Yonasuburu Tsukiji, I hope I said that right, was attached to produce the effects, while Noriaki Yuasa, we'll get to him later, was assigned to direct it. But there was only one problem, the rats themselves. You see, they could do suitmation, mechanical props, or even stop motion, but they were rejected. Instead, they had to use live rats. And how did they get the rats? Simple, by going down into the sewers and picking out some sewer rats. How fucking disgusting. Unfortunately, as you may expect, the sewer rats were terrible actors, they were wild, and most of all, they were filled with fleas and diseases that would make you think the bubonic plague was coming back. But then, the health department caught wind of this and shut down the production of the movie for good. Thank goodness. Because of this, Nagata decided to think of another way of making a monster movie. Nagata in early 1965 was heading home from the United States on a plane. Legend has it that he came up with the idea to make a movie about a giant turtle due to him looking out at an island that looks very similar to that of a tortoise. Once he got home, he told the crew that worked on the cancelled rat movie to write a treatment for his tortoise idea. And they got to work. Now, originally, the name of the monster was going to be Camera, since the word Kami is Japanese for turtle but because they didn't want the audience to think that it was going to be a movie about a device that takes photos, they removed the K and replaced it with a G. Thus, Gamera was born. But there lies another snag in the mix. Noriaki Yuasa, the director, was heavily ridiculed by his colleagues and even the studio executives who, who all believed that the movie was going to bomb and bomb hard and wouldn't even care to compete with Toho's Godzilla. It was made even worse when the script wasn't even finished as the suit itself was being created. But Yuasa and his team worked day and night to complete this film even with a tight schedule. And that right there is the problem. That whole process was not even that easy. This movie had a limited budget of 40 million yen and was shot in black and white. And they ran into many many, many production issues like outdated equipment, insufficient power, and faulty props. Yuasa once again received the brunt of criticism from others around him, but the man stood fast using Dai's available resources. The film was acquired by Harris Associates Inc. and World Enterprise Corporation, and they did, well, what the people did with Godzilla King of the Monsters, a 1956 edition, they altered the shit out of this version to make it more suitable for an American audience. And they added another M to Gamera's name because of the reason that I stated three paragraphs ago. At last, Gamera the Giant Monster was released in Japan on November 27, 1965, and Gamera the Invincible, yes, that's his American title, was released in the United States on December 15, 1966. And both versions were an unexpected success. And I bet Noriaki Yuasa was having a field day belittling his peers and executives as much as they did to him. Anyway, here's the film synopsis. A nuclear explosion in the far north unleashes Gamera, the legendary giant turtle, from his sleeve under the ice. 
In his search for energy, aka fire, Gamera wrecks havoc all over the entire world, well, mainly Japan, and it's up to the scientists, soldiers, and the United Nations, sort of, to put a stop to Gamera's rampage. Hey, the tunnel wants to go on a world tour, man. Leave him alone. I definitely need a two minute break after this one. See you in a bit for my final thoughts. Far from the worst and far from the best. It sits in the middle for me. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Everything in this movie screams Godzilla ripoff. Almost every scene is like Godzilla, but there are some things that aren't original. Well, the characters are nothing original, completely bland and devoid of any personality. I don't know, it feels like the effort is there, but most of it is just not there. And don't get me started on the fucking child. Oh my god, he's an idiot. Even more so in the Japanese version. At least in the American version, he's slightly less. But for fuck's sake, why the hell would you risk your own damn life just to see Gamera? I mean, I know that he's, I know that he saved her life and everything, but come on! While on the subject of English speakers, in the Japanese version, they are horrendous. In the US version, thankfully, those scenes are completely replaced with new ones. That was for the better. Those new American scenes? They're alright. They're acted well, typical for a 1960s monster movie. No complaints here. And then we come to Gamera himself. He is unoriginal and original at the same time. Unoriginal because, again, he's a Godzilla ripoff. On the other hand, he is original in his own way. Hell, the best thing about this movie is Gamera himself. The fact that he is able to fly like a flying saucer comes out of fucking nowhere. It is the best and yet the worst idea ever, but it's unique. And I do like his design. Well, when he's facing the camera, he got some dirt moments. Special effects are on par with the Toho Monster movies, but they lack that distinct sound. Speaking of sound, the soundtrack is nothing to write home about. Most of it is just on repeat. In the American version, that soundtrack is kept, but it does have this one song called Gamera, and it is so fucking cheesy. Overall, Gamera the Invincible Giant Monster is okay. I'm not going to sit here and say it was terrible, far from it. The enjoyable parts are, again, Gamera, but everything else is mediocre at best. I'll let you decide whether or not you want to see Gamera's origins or completely skip them altogether. And like I said earlier, the movie was a surprise hit for Daei Studios, so of course they had a change of heart for Nuyaki Nuasa and the lovable turtle. But before we get to that, we're heading back to Toho, but we're not going back to Godzilla just yet. 
in my own idiotic fucking brilliance, I skip past a monster movie that Toho released in August of 1965. And wouldn't you know it, Frankenstein is in Japan. Uh, sort of. Until then, thank you all for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you even want more of the Brumacian Podcast, subscribe to the channel. This has been Demetrius signing off, and long live the turtle.